Hello, you're watching News Mongolian MNB World. I'm your host, Ayunda Terobasenho. Our top stories. Chinese border closure could lead to a plastic packaging shortage. President Khrushchev to pay an official visit to Russia. 950 COVID-19 cases and 11 additional deaths reported. For other news, stay tuned. There are more than 50 factories in Mongolia that produce plastic packaging. These factories purchase raw materials from China and produce a variety of plastic bags and packaging for the domestic market. Due to the closure of the Chinese border, there is a high probability that manufacturers will be facing a shortage of raw materials. Up Plastic is a manufacturing company that produces more than 10,000 types of food packaging to order. Most manufacturers in Mongolia order raw materials from China, Japan, and South Korea. Up Plastic has been stocking up on material reserves for three months, but according to a factory worker, due to the closure of the southern border, there is now a shortage of raw materials. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought some advantages to the food packaging industry. The number of supporters of domestic products is growing and people are becoming more positive. I think that's a very good thing. The public is beginning to understand that local manufacturing must develop in Mongolia. That means that the assets that used to go out to purchase imports are starting to return. In order to maintain this positive trend, the process of importing raw materials should be conducted in a more effective manner. The packaging shortage has also affected the production of other products. For example, bread has been in short supply in Gir area grocery stores for the last few days. The uncut loaves of bread that people usually buy are coming in smaller numbers because of the shortage of packaging materials. People often ask about other bread. Because we are a small shop, we used to buy 20 loaves of bread a day, but now that number has decreased. From bread to other kinds of domestically manufactured food, all of them are dependent on packaging made from imported raw materials. The closure of the southern border is also influencing prices for food and medical items. Higher prices for all import-dependent raw materials are affecting production costs. The Ministry of Health reported that 950 new COVID-19 cases were confirmed today and 11 people have died. The Ministry of Health today on November 10 has reported that 950 new COVID-19 cases were detected in the past 24 hours after tests were carried out at PCR laboratories across the country. Unfortunately, 11 patients, 4 women and 7 men, all with underlying health conditions, died of COVID-19 complications. 644 out of which were confirmed in the Ulaanbaatar and their 303 were confirmed in the provinces and the remaining three cases were imported. 11,723 COVID-19 patients are being treated at hospitals nationwide. Additionally, 30,237 patients are being treated at home. Among the 11,723 COVID-19 patients being treated at hospitals nationwide, 5,038 are showing mild symptoms of illness, 244 are in critical condition. Currently in Mongolia, over 2.25 million people have received their first COVID-19 vaccine dose nationwide and over 2.14 million have received a second dose of vaccine. This week, newly appointed ambassadors to Mongolia from Belarus, France and the European Union presented their letters of credence to the President of Mongolia. We have details in the following report. Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Republic of Belarus to Mongolia Dmitry Garelik presented his letter of credence to President of Mongolia on November 8, emphasizing the active development of Mongolia-Belarus relations in the fields of agriculture, transportation, emergency services and education. President expressed interest in further expanding the scope of cooperation, particularly trade and economic cooperation, and wished the ambassador success in his work. Ambassador Gorelick underscored the opportunity to cooperate in science and technology and expressed his commitment to working to strengthen traditional friendly relations with Mongolia. 
On the same day, newly appointed ambassador of France to Mongolia, Sebastian Sirum, presented his letter of credence. President Khrushchev emphasized that the friendly relations between Mongolia and France are successfully developing based on the common values of democracy, human rights and freedoms, and expressed his desire to further expand cooperation in various sectors, including trade, the economy, culture and education. He expressed his desire to cooperate with France in the field of environmental protection, climate change resilience, and combating desertification, and the intensification of cooperation in the field of renewable energy. He wished Ambassador Surun every success in his work. Ambassador Surun expressed his commitment to work with Mongolia and to expand cooperation in the fields of defense, civil security, mining, and culture. The French ambassador also offered support for Mongolian athletes who will participate in the 2024 Summer Olympics in Paris. The head of the European delegation to Mongolia, Axel Nikes, presented her credentials to the President of Mongolia. President Khrushchev thanked the European Union for its consistent support since Mongolia's transition to democracy and a market economy and stressed his desire to expand bilateral relations and cooperation in the field of green development and environmental protection. He also thanked the European Union and its member states for their significant contribution to making COVID-19 prevention and treatment measures available through its funding of COVAX facility. Ambassador Nikes expressed her readiness to continue the successful implementation of the European Union's multifaceted development assistance program in Mongolia and to work in close cooperation on sustainable green development and economic development. Thank you for staying tuned with us on MNB World. Now let's take a look at Mongolia's current affairs. President of Mongolia Khrushchev will pay an official visit to the Russian Federation in December. Currently preparations are underway for President Khrushchev's official visit to Russia. The visit is taking place within the framework of the 100th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Mongolia and Russia. President Khrushchev's visit will include addressing some outstanding issues between the two countries and discussions of further expanding cooperation. While serving as Prime Minister, President Khrushchev met with the Russian President Vladimir Putin in Sochi, Russia on December 5, 2019. During the meeting, a memorandum was signed on building a natural gas pipeline from Russia to China through Mongolian territory. This is Khrushchev's first visit to Russia since becoming president. Now let's check on the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Following this, let's tune in for our regular feature on sports. Scholarships were awarded to athletes participating in the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics. The scholarship was announced by the International Olympic Committee, and nine Mongolian athletes were nominated, of which three skiers and one skater were granted a scholarship. Athletes participating in the program will receive a stipend of 750 US dollars per month for a total of 3,000 US dollars over a four-month period under a contract with the Mongolian National Olympic Committee and the IOC. The scholarship will be revoked if the scholarship holder fails to qualify or if medical reasons, delays in reporting or doping issues arise. During the Tokyo Summer Olympics, 17 Mongolian athletes were selected for the scholarship and 14 of them qualified. A Chwadrach, a recipient of a scholarship, said, We have been training in Switzerland for more than a month. We will participate in the World Cup again in two days. Narangir, Secretary General of the Mongolian Skating Federation, said, Our athletes have not competed in the international competitions for two years due to the pandemic, and despite the lack of training on the ice, their success is relatively good. In particular, Zot and Zerkhtwater are setting new national records. The first series of the World Cup, organized by the International Skating Federation, will be held in Poland on November 12th through 14th. 
Mongolian athletes are flying from America today to participate in this competition. The next series will take place in December in Salt Lake City, USA and Calgary, Canada. Zolt took second place and Zorchtwater took eighth place in the previous round of the America's Cup. Looking at the way Mongolian athletes are competing, there is a hope that they will qualify for the Olympics. The next fight of the Mongol fighting champion will be held in San Francisco, USA. Timuchin will see her shock, Unur Bat Purvjav, but Tur Angoch Bat Water, and Nanding Irdin Mungun Soch will represent Mongolia in the octagon with 22 other participants. The next event of the MFC Mixed Martial Arts Federation will be held on the 14th of this month in San Francisco, USA. Timujung Unruat Patur and Nandi Irdung will represent Mongolia in the octagon and defend their MFC lightweight championship belt. Timujung is 4 1 and Patur is 1 1, while Unruat will have his first mixed martial arts fight. Also, Nandi Irdung will fight to defend his MFC championship belt at the peak of the fight. The last fight of the MFC was held in June 2019, and Nandi Irdung, one of the biggest fighters in Mongolia, became the federation's lightweight champion. The fight will take place on November 14th at 9 a.m. this Sunday. Now here is the weather forecast for major cities around the world. Well, that's it for today. Many thanks for staying with us on News Mongolia. See you tomorrow with more stories and updates. Have a great evening. Goodbye.